Okay, so for this exercise, we got a vector space that is generated by the, the set of all the other pairs, uh, where each uh, element of the pair is a real number. So we got uh, the set of uh, real pairs, and the sum in this vector space is defined as follows. If we consider a vector u, as u1, u2, and v, u, v1, v2, then the summation is just the sum of each of the components. As you can observe here, u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2. But the multiplication, in this case, by a scalar is given as follows. We put a zero in the first component and we multiply just by the second component of the vector u. Okay, so these uh, define the operations on our, on, our ver on our vector space, and we need to prove uh, to to do some to check some 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 things in this vector space. So the first thing is let's consider these two vectors u minus one two and v equals to three four and a scalar, that is just a real number, in this case, 3. So let's calculate u plus v. So u plus v, based on the definition of our summation in this vector space, is equals to minus 1 plus 3 and 2 plus 4. This is equals to 2, 6. So this is the summation of these two vectors. And the other one is the multiplication of this scalar by this vector here. But remember that the multiplication in this vector space is defined at putting zero in the first component and then just multiplying the scalar times the second component of the vector, in this case two. So this becomes zero, six. Okay, so this is just a manner to illustrate how the operations on this vector space are working. Then we need to say why V is closed, why this vector space is closed. So let's remember that the vectors in this vector space, let's say U and V, define it as U1, U2, and V equals to V1 and V2. When we sum these two, uh, vectors in the usual way, u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2, what happened is that here we got a summation of real numbers. So the summation gives us another real number. So this summation is again a real number and this is a real number and this vector space v is composed by pairs of real numbers. So the summation stay in the vector space. And what happened with the multiplication is something similar, and is that ku is equals to zero, and k, which is a real number, times the second component of the vector u, and this is also a real number. So again, here, this is a real number, and zero is also a real number. So what this return is a pair of real numbers, which are elements on our, on our vector space. So that's why this uh, vector space that we are considering here is closed. Then here we need to, um, so what you can see here are the axioms of a vector space defined by the set of elements, uh, an operation for the summation of vectors and a multiplication by a scalar. So what happened is that uh, we know that R square is a vector space that is the set of all the vectors of this form where X and Y are real numbers. And the summation is defined as X1 plus Y1. Okay, let me write this different. And if, for example, we got two vectors on R2, which is a vector space, 
then the summation, the usual summation, is equals to u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2. Okay, so this and well and, and the multiplication by a scalar in R2 is just multiplying the scalar by, by each of the elements of the vector. That means KU1 plus KU2. So here you can observe observe something, and is that our vector space have the same definition for the summation of these vectors. And what it differs is on the scalar multiplication. So our vector space is kind of similar with R2. And the point of this, the, this question, the question C, is that if, if the summation on our vector space V is similar, actually is equal to the one defined in R2, then what axioms are satisfied? So for that, I classify here the axioms of a vector space into colors. So the blue ones corresponds to the summation axioms. So these whole blue uh, axioms here corresponding to the vector space define how the sum operations behave on a vector space. And the one in red define how a vector space behaves with respect to the scalar multiplication. If you're more interested in these kind of topics uh, related to mathematics, uh, actually this blue part correspo corresponds to the axioms of uh, an abelian group. And these in red corresponds to the axioms of, of an action, an scalar action over the vector space. But that is just to mention. So what happened here is that in our case, the vector space V that is defined as a set of uh, real uh, pairs shared the same summation operation with the same summation operation with R2. That means that these actions should be satisfied. The first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the five, because th those are related with the sum operation. And we know that in R squared, R squared is a vector space. So if both have the same summation operation, they should satisf satisfy the same actions. So V, in our, in our case V, this vector space V that we define at the beginning of this exercise should satisfy the first of five actions from one to fifth. And for the rest, we don't know because the scalar multiplication is defined in a different way with respect to the R R2. So from this, we cannot say anything. But with the operation, with some operation of the vectors, we can say something because they're similar to R squared and R squared, we know that is a vector space. Then, on the last part, is that we need to show that the axioms seven, eight, and nine are satisfied in our case. So let's remember that the scalar multiplication by a vector in our vector space V is defined as zero K and the second component of the vector. So for this, the seventh axiom, we need to show that K times a summation of vectors is equals to k u plus k v. And here is important to remember that u and v are elements on the vector space. So this, so k u plus v is equals to k times u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2. And these are equal, remember that this is a scalar multiplication and it behaves in this way, is equals to zero comma k times u2 plus v2. And the right hand side of this equation is equals to ku plus kv. This is equals to k times u1 u2 plus k k times v1 
v2. This, remember that this multiplication behaves as this part here, so it's 0 k u2 plus 0 k v2, and this at the end, after summing this together, we get, we, we get k u2 plus v2. They are equal to the seventh axiom is satisfied, so it's correct. Then <clears throat> let's, let's check what happened with the eighth uh, axiom. It say that k plus m times u is equals to ku plus mu. In this case, k and m are real numbers and u is the vector on the vector space. So the left-hand side of this part is k plus m are just a number, so this is again a real number, and we're multiplying with u, which is a vector. So this uh, is equals to zero times k plus m and the second component of the vector. And the right-hand side of this equation is equals to ku plus mu. This is defined as 0, comma, ku2, and this part is 0, comma, k, and, I'm sorry, is m. m u2. And after summing these two vectors, we obtain 0, comma, k plus m u2. So as you can see, here, these two vectors, the, the, the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal, so this axiom holds. And the last axiom that we need to check is the ninth axiom. Let's say that k times mu is equals to km times u. So again, we need to repeat the procedure as before. The left-hand side, in this case, k times mu is equals to k times 0, comma, m and the second component of the vector. And then we need to repeat the square multiplication in this case, this is an m, uh, and this is equals to, again, 0 in the first coordinate and k multiplying to the second component of this vector that is this whole part. So it's k m u. The right-hand side of this equation is state this times u. So now this form a scalar and then we multiply by u. So this is directly 0 times k m u. And you can see that both are equal, so the ninth axiom holds as well. And that's it. Thank you.